Good morning, chat. How are y'all? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, there's now a fan in my background. That's new. <laughs> it's funny that in this tight little area, I don't notice big R2-D2 sitting behind me right there. Or what, what, was the, what was the robot in Rogue One? K-9 play, something like that. That was a cool robot. Anyway, good morning again. Uh, Inkwell Monster, 11 months. Love Loveless, 12 months. Thank y'all so much. Um, good to see everybody uh, in chat. Schmevelin, 23 months. Let's go. 23 much. K2SO. K2 was, is, was the best ro robot, right? I mean, K2 is pretty legit. Rich Sticks, 19 months of subbing. I appreciate you. Thank y'all so much for re-upping your subs, for Twitch priming. Um, this it, It's great. Um, we're I'm excited to get back into streaming. I don't have much planned for today. We are going to do like pencils, some pencil stuff today that I, I, I got a plan for. But I think, you know, this is just getting ready for, for next year. Bigger and better streams. Um with y'all's viewership and your support is is awesome it's definitely um on track this year let me roll up my sleeves a little bit it's a little warm happy birthday tony when was his birthday i know it was soon i didn't know if it was like christmas eve or like the 30th or or what i know it's around here hk from kotor i don't think i know hk is that the um hey annabelle good morning or good afternoon, I should say. Um, but yeah, I, K2's on the mind because we watched Rogue One over the holidays. So um, yeah, you pretty much watch Star Wars over the holidays now, right? That's like kind of the move, <clears throat> seems like to me. So I've had a pretty chill, pretty much a week, right, since we last spoke. Um I did not watch The Mandalorian yet. Tyler, when are we going to watch The Mandalorian? Whenever you want. I will... Okay, today's Tuesday. We will finish The Mandalorian before the weekend is over. Deal? It's on, what, is, is this only 10 episodes? I know it was my homework, but I couldn't get Tyler to sit still. So, like, me and Tyler have to watch it together. So, Tyler's 12. We watched the first series. We love it. Um, so I can't watch it and then rewatch it with him. We have to watch it the first time together. So we will start, we will finish by Sunday. I'm putting that down. Book it, book it. But you know, last week was just so crazy. Um, you know, with, you know, Christmas and, and all that and just schedules are wonky. Uh, kids are very, uh, you know, hard, hard to pin down after the holidays you know, they're into, into their own thing and, you know, not having to go to school. And we have some good friends here, their neighbors, so they've been playing. So it's good. Um, so, yeah, what I was going to say is uh, I had a pretty chill, like, last full week of very, very little to no work. Um, it was interesting. It was, uh, it was definitely good. Um, I didn't have to focus on too much. You know, it's pretty quiet. Like my inbox wasn't, you know, going bananas like it sometimes does. And like all my streams and of of information weren't going bananas. Everything was pretty quiet. So um, it felt good to take a chill pill for a minute. And then I've been getting anxious the last couple of days. It's like, I know I could do some work yesterday or I could do some work on Sunday like I normally do and and do it. But I just like, I just didn't. And it was cool. Like I, you know, watch TV. I, I watched a lot of soccer. Um, a ton of soccer. Speaking of which, one o'clock today. Why are they putting all the games on at one today? I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, read a bunch. You know, I'm reading. You know, the I have the Beastie Boys book on the Apple uh, bookstore iBooks. I have. I'm reading uh, the Golfer's Journal. Like I read that. That's like a subscription. I got my Juxtapose magazine in. Um, that's my art magazine subscription. So like I just chilled. I listened to a lot of music. Um, and I didn't do too much stationary stuff, uh, especially work-wise, which is good. But today, today we're back on it. Today we're back to just regular, regular schedule. Yeah, Lemic, uh, three o'clock Man U game. 
in the past couple years, I I would like our chances against Man U. We've played them well. Man U looks a little bit different this year. Um, they're playing well, and we're still out. Raul Jimenez, um, I think it will be a struggle uh, today, but we'll see. We'll see. We've been hanging in there well enough, the, the Wolves. Watch Ted Lasso over the weekend and almost maybe want to watch soccer. Ted Lasso is a wonderful show. It's just so good. I, I've watched it solo. i got to get my wife to watch it with me now because I think she would dig it. It's It's really good. It's really, really good, really smart. Um, they got some really cool, cool Easter eggs in there that I I enjoyed as a as a longtime sports fan. They did so, and it's it's not necessarily a sports movie, right? So um, that's the best part about it. So is it's it's posed as a as a sports uh, show. No, I shouldn't say movie, but it's really it's it's a it's a story about life, and it's really good. There is going to be a season two. Um, I saw them come out with the whatever statement. Um, I mean, they're set up. They're set up now for three seasons, right? So I'm, I'm not going to spoil it for those who hadn't seen it. It's on uh, Apple. Uh, it's on Apple TV. Birthday is next Tuesday, a week from today. Well, happy early birthday. We'll have a birthday celebration on the stream uh, next week. Caro, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you. So, um, today, like most days, I don't have many plans for streams, so if y'all want to talk about anything in particular, um, but I do have some pencil sorting to do, which sounds like the most boring stream ever. Um, I mean, it. We're, this is a stream about pens and pencils and paper, so it's that's kind of the default, right? Um, but I have a bunch of pencils I'm trying to organize, debating on whether I want to do a project or not, probably not. Um, but what I really need to do is, since I've become kind of a pencil head, more even more so than I already was with my writing situation, the way that it is, um, I want to get out a bunch of good pencils and put them into this new storage Rhodia uh, like desk cup holder. This is a really nice thing. I got it from Casa de Stila Grafica when I ordered some pens recently. Um, and you know it's it's very on brand for me very orange do you see the graffiti cw pencils i want to say yes i want to say yes jd lady 20 months of sub 28 months of subbing tyler 28 months of subbing can i hear it woo, woo! we got a woo so um i want to um i want to go through some of my pencil storage Tyler rewizzles 19 months. Woo! Woo! All right, Thad Castle has a question. Let's get to this. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you this pencil situation I have going. It's right off camera over here. And then uh, we're going to we're gonna organize and sort. So Thad Castle, let's see what this question is. I have a problem question. I got a Sailor Lucky Charm 21 karat fine. It was too fine for me. I'm going to sell it. In the meantime, I got a 1911 large and medium fine, and that nib is the same width as the fine. I have a 1911 S in medium fine, and that's what I was looking for, but in 21K, the issue is that both the 21K nibs are the same, but one's an F and one's an MF. What do I do? <sighs> yeah, the <laughs> so the F held the uh, held the comment, just the, the phrase, the F. Um, So... That's a tough one because you're in a weird situation where you're not happy with the nibs in general. Even the one that you like is not good enough because it's the smaller nib and the 14K and the smaller barrel. Um, it sounds like you need a medium barrel, I mean a medium nib, or you get the medium fine tuned to have a wetter flow so is it a qc issue i mean i can't say without seeing them um it certainly sounds like a qc issue but the mf if you like that and you think that's the size it might be worth getting an extra set of eyeballs on it 
which is not what you want to hear when you get a nib um, new. Hey, good morning, Tessa. Sailor F and MF are very close. Yeah. Um, I've been going the MF recently. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a tough situation because from your perspective, you shouldn't be in this situation, right? Like I'm understanding that from, from what you're saying and that's a fair place to be. Um, so how do you fix it? The, if the 21 karat MF is too fine, I almost worry, I almost wonder if adjusting the flow to be wetter would counteract the fineness, if that makes sense. Like I said, that's going to take extra work. There's going to get someone to look at, um, to do, to make it flow wetter and finer. Paper cat lady, 15 months, 15 months, Tyler. Woo. Woo. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, yeah, and it just depends. There is no consistency in any brand ever. It's pretty true. I think Pelican's pretty consistent. It's just consistently what I don't want. It's consistently good if you if you like wide and wet. I think they're pretty consistent. That's a, I think that's they're about the only one I would put the consistency label on. <clears throat> Got a diplomat traveler in deep purple for Christmas. Noise. Eh. Eh. Nah, not a not on Pelican. You would know better than me. <laughs> can you can you put consistent on any brand? Strings and pedals? Can you if you had to pick one brand and say, this is my brand I'm going to for consistency, what would you say? Rich sticks, 500 bits, and 10 emotes shared. That's awesome. So I would be hard pressed to 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 drop the consistent tag on anyone. Pi I was gonna say pilot's pretty consistent. I would put them ahead of Sailor and Platinum for consistency from from those brands. Um, you know they're a little bit different nib field nib style than both Sailor and Platinum. They do it their own way, and it's pretty darn consistent. I've had some issues with the vanishing point nibs consistency, um, but for normal fountain pen nibs, the Leonardo's are pretty consistent. I was thinking that. <coughs> Excuse me. I like how the Pelican F nib size have a good flow as they adhere to the Western nib sizes. I think everyone else adheres to Pelican's nib sizes. I don't know that. <coughs> Excuse me, Pelican's adhering to anything. At the risk of jinxing myself, I've never had a nib issue out of the box um, with any pen. <coughs> I generally haven't had nib, nib issues out of the box with any pen. Yeah, people who have constant nib issues... Um, I am, I'm not in that category. Um, once in a blue moon, maybe like I've had, I've definitely had some wonky Kaveco steel nibs. That's about it. Most of my stuff's pretty, pretty good. Um, even your palladium Visconti nib wrote fine. Now that's a dice roll that I would not be down for. Maybe adapt well to the pen you're writing with, or maybe like we have a wider range of optimal usage, right? A particularness that we don't that we don't have to have. I would say, yeah, mine have been. I'm trying to think think if I've had anything really messy out of the box. I'm trying to. It seems like I've had one, but I can't remember. Diplomat's traditionally good out of the box. Out of the Bob ex issue with Conklin recently, that's more normal than having a good nib out of the box with Conklin, unfortunately. I think about two nib issues in the 30 years. I had an Aurora that was a little wonky that I had to send out um, to get adjusted. Both of my Pelican M200s were terrible. That's crazy. Faber-Castell's very consistent. 
I don't have a ton, but like, you know, maybe like the five or so that I've used, it's always the same. Always just dead on. They've always been steel. I don't think I've ever used a Faber-Castell gold nib. Um, Faber-Castell steel nibs have been sweet. I'm a little shocked that the 14 medium fine and the 21 medium fine are different. Yeah, I don't really have an answer for that other than just like QC and a penmanship extra fine needed to be shimmed. The tines were to so tight. I'm almost wondering though, in that situation, what do you expect? <laughs> that is a that is a needly nail nib, one of my favorites. Like, and I get that that it's it it probably did need some some adjustment, but like, what are you expecting with the penmanship EF? <laughs> Just got one of the Yovo OmniFlex nibs and I'm having trouble figuring it out. Which one is that? Is that the one with like the round cutouts or is that like a, a different one that I'm thinking of? Uh, yeah, Tony, that's my assumption too. But I think they're saying that the opposite is what's happening. That the MF is actually putting down a finer line. I could have read that wrong. Yeah, the 21K is finer. Yeah. so tight that no ink came through i can imagine that i love that that penmanship ef nib is awesome i should use that more i need to get mine out and uh, put them in some other platinum uh pilot pens and do it these are the newest ones the cutout almost looks like a capsule okay so yeah i have one of those um i enjoy them i mean they're they're soft they're not like flexible like y'all know my stance on modern flex, right? I mean, it's they're all soft nibs. I don't know that they're traditionally flex nibs, but that marketing doesn't really work. Does anyone have a Pilot Falcon with a soft nib? I do. I super, super love my Falcon for writing. If you expect it to be a flexible nib pen, you will not like it invisible is too fine <laughs> i get it <laughs> so you have to have your expectations in check with a pilot falcon nib if you want more of a flex go with the fa nib that's the move if you really want some variation go with the fa nib that is a different nib than the falcon i love the falcon for writing and it gives you a tiny little variation it makes my handwriting look awesome but even if you press that and 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 kind of leverage the nib um you you can get some you can get some line variation but you have to understand there is a limit to that pen and the fa is going to give you more if flex is what you're looking for so but i prefer the falcon because i just generally write with it right and the fa will give me even more bounce and more flex and make my lines wider which it depends on what you're what you want I recommend the FA for people thinking that the Falcon is the answer to their to their flex nib question and it's not it's the FA. <clears throat> How's your stock of dot dash cards really good? Uh blue and lime green standard cards uh, stock is good. Um if we did another color next year what would we do? If I did if I did I'll always keep blue in stock. But like, and we've done amber in the past, and we've done lime. Um, if I did a different color next year, I don't know that it needs one. The purple that we use is always pretty good. Pink would be my choice. I don't know that it's the right choice though. <laughs> purple. You really want blank note cards, huh? Pink and purple. I wonder if we could do a two-sided. You're in need of more small cards, you and everyone else. I gotta get going with this new printer. I'm gonna do that in the first of the year. I'm 100% out of those. So, I love the TI nib, but it's mushy compared to an FA. TI nibs are a um, you you have to learn how to use a titanium nib, in my opinion. And I'm not saying you particularly. I'm saying in general, they are not the same as using other nibs because of how they feel on the page. <clears throat> There's a brand on jet pens that's petite size card and blank. Does Mormon do them? 
yeah we'll do some more small cards the biggest thing the biggest problem with the small cards is they're expensive they cost as much as the big cards to make we've had these conversations in the past before <clears throat> but I, I just got to get them done they're clearly clearly popular i love them to death they're one of my favorite things turquoise would be pretty cool but i was thinking more my choice would be pink like the bubblegum pink that you traditionally see on the index card but i think purple might be the answer because we've done that same purple i already have the the pantone for the purple that i like in the um gigante and the petite cards both use the purple i think purple might be the move uh, but everyone wants pink. I want, I want pink too. We'll see. We'll see if I can do both. We'll see. Now, second, second part of this question. I'm fidgeting with this, this thing while I'm talking to y'all. Second part of the note card question. And this one's a lot harder. And this is a mistake to even ask y'all. But would you want a new index card that had different segmentation on the front of the card without having too many rules like would you have do you like block area cards like i think our uh our our, our line plus blank cards kind of answer a lot of the questions that i'm thinking about as far as card layouts like it's open and you can do a lot of things on your own with it but you would you prefer a card like um the old frictionless cards that had like a couple blocks on the top for information big block in the center and then like a cross cross bottom block i i don't know if there's a uh i would prefer the, prefer the line plus blank without the logo on the blank side that's fair like it kind of like a more like a headers and footers section than a to-do section right i don't want to put i'm not going to print anything with its own blocks right for marking Correct, Joho index cards. And those are small. Those almost look like paper thin. I wonder if they're even um, like cardstock. Smooth cards are thicker regular paper, than, but thinner than regular index cards. I'd show you all on the screen, but I don't know that it'd be, be worth bringing it over. Yeah, it's just something that I have to get... I mean, we should, I should just do it, right? I should just do it. If Especially if I'm going to put in a new order for new cards where we have to order the stock anyway, I might as well do a set of blank. Right, everyone wants a blank? Okay. Blank it is. When I make new index cards, I will include blank. A pen that's shipped from Virginia on the 12th is finally scheduled to arrive today. That seems early based on all the ratings that I, all the delays that I see. So, all right, y'all are convincing me that y'all would purchase blank cards. Kinda, so it wouldn't be with lines, right? So think about it with grids and then you take that top section split it in two and then have that long section across the bottom in one block is kind of what i'm thinking like a two block on the top an open section middle and uh here i'll let me pull this up so we take this i would want the long section to be at the bottom and then we'd have a split section at the top like a half and half section i'll sketch it out for y'all one day i mean it's a very simple design i wonder if aaron still has i never like these because the uh oh god yeah i'll never find that never mind the quality of the card was not any good but I did like the layout. But Paper Cat Lady blank cards also? Okay. I'm buying what y'all are selling. All right. Well, when I go to do the um, new order, work with a new printer, 
this index card should be pretty easy for a new printer to pick up on. I'd be a little bit more concerned when I when I get the notebooks, but I think our stuff's pretty straightforward. So the purple falcon is very it's a bright purple. It's nice. Um, I gave one away not too long ago. <laughs> might be the first pin of 2021 falcons i mean look you're not going to find a bigger fan of the falcon than me you just have to have your expectations in check when you click the purchase button you want that pin in hand i get sweaty anticipation i totally agree with that like it's super super um it's been super sketchy the past like month month and a half it's as far as uh shipping goes it's been Luckily, we haven't had too many problems with Spoke and Knock and uh, Pin Attic stuff, but a few things crop up that normally don't. My first pin of 2021 is probably going to be a Spoke pencil, assuming they ever have any. That's coming. That's. I'm not sure there's anything higher on the list than the exact pencil that you want, which is why we ran into the problem that we did. So there you have it. I don't think there is a higher priority than the Spoke 5.1 gunmetal in 0.5 millimeter width. Got your stuff from Knox super fast? Good. You just never know. That's It's a total crapshoot right now. Jay Hubbard, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Hope you're having a good day. What pen or pencils are you using today? You using any stationary? I had my SF Falcon ink continually since I got it back in 2016. Got it. It's just an awesome, awesome pen. It just is. If I swear if it sells out before I get one, I'm coming down there. Well, this time, he sent so few last time, and he may send few this time, they won't even hit the site without me at least holding one for you. Like, I'll pull one back, so if they accidentally sell out, uh, um, I'll, I'll still have one, but we really don't know what happened with that inventory. We should never have like a new inventory of four. Like they, that's all we had. Like that's all we had made four pencils. And then somehow eight of them sold. Your order is still pending. So there you go. It's already in there. All right, y'all want to do some pencils? I want to do some pencils. I don't care what y'all want to do. You should get one. You and three other people. <laughs> four other people. You and three other people. That would be four total. All right. So here's the first question, chat. We're going to build out some pencils today. First question is do we store them in this box? Do we store them core down, point down, or point up? Point down, point down or point up? We're gonna fill this thing up today. I'll show you what we're gonna do. I mean, point down shows me all the, the type of pencil it is, but point up, Makes a lot of sense. Good morning, Miss G's Crafties. How are you? Point up. But if so, if I have this thing full and they're all point up, I already have a broken wrist. I'm gonna have a stabs, stab, stab, stab. I know. Don't damage the tips. I know. I like this is a dilemma, right? This is the thing that we have to handle before we even start today. Point down with pencil caps or go point up. But if they're all up like this. Will I be able to tell which pencil it is? It is gonna mark up the bottom of the container. That's like a mental block of mine. Micron X, I'm with you on that, where like all the markings will be down below. As long as you don't keep dropping them. And this is a very soft uh, pencil. I just, I just, um, here, let me switch this up. Well, we'll see if I'll do this. So this is the Musgrave News 600 pencil. I don't know what 
like type of cores in this because I didn't look it up. It is mega soft and dark. It's actually kind of nice. Marking up the inside of the cup gives it character. Yeah, I don't know yet. Put something in the bottom like foam. Now, I like the depth of this container too. Use the divisions to distinguish the, the types of pencils. Okay, well, let's handle this next then. Put the box on its side. I think I would have like a mental hurdle with that. All right, get, get composted. This is why we can't do what you're saying. So here's one bin we're going to go through. The famed peanut butter pretzel bin. So we're going to go through these and pull out my favorites. Um, so that's container number one. Y'all you'll see where this is going. Here is the Cafe Du Monde container. Container number two with who knows what in here. Right. Container number two. And... Stegman Coliseum <laughs> when we went to see the University of Georgia's uh, women's gymnastic team which are one of the best in the country several years ago this cup came home with us and uh, then it became a pencil cup so this is how we store pens in the closet of doom pencils in the closet of doom right bulk storage so the system here is there's no system here but what I want to do is pull out my favorites from here and put them in here and leave them on this desk, right? These are all these are all stored away in the closet, and I have to go hunt them down for what I want. The rolled up one is this tricky uh, stick pencil that someone sent me. I got somewhere. Yeah, we're not going to use this one. This is like a 420 pencil or something. Like there's all kinds of blaze in it jokes to go along with this thing. It's kind of nice. It is the tabula. Is that what it's called? Fabula. Fabula. So this is the fabula pencil. That does not make the cut. Roddy, I don't know what's going on with you, buddy. You doing all right? So... I'm going to blindly grab, I'm going to just start grabbing these pencils. We're probably not going to go through all this today, but I'm going to get some pencils into this cup because I'm tired of like, so I've only been using, these are the ones I've been using. So the Blackwing MMX and the Musgrave uh, pencil, um, Tennessee Red. So those have been my go-tos. And then I've been grabbing some various Blackwings. Those make the cup. Boom. Um, I am here for the pencil content. <laughs> Who knew? I am so into pencils right now, Annabelle, because my wrist is not allowing me to use uh, uh, fountain pens um, in any kind of reasonable fashion. So I cleaned every fountain pen I own this weekend. It was driving me crazy that they've been sitting there inked for so long and not in use that I just had to just bite the bullet. It was a pain in the butt. Um, to have opposite handed cleaning because I really aggressively clean my pens with like the aspirator and I'm forcing through water and I couldn't, I was shooting water everywhere. Like I had water down my, down my brace and just all kinds of, it was, it was a shirt show yesterday, um, on that. So, all right, let's start with, we're going to start with this cup. I'm going to start pulling out some stuff. Yeah. Like I normally don't mind cleaning pens at all. But yesterday it was it was I'd been putting it off because I knew I wouldn't get uh, any good leverage. How much is your lefty penmanship improved? So if I go slow and think about what I'm doing, it's pretty good. Like it's pretty good. Like I wrote some lines this morning. I don't think I can show you in any reasonable fashion. Maybe I'll write something new. But any long form writing is just off the table right now because it's so slow. Let's pick out a few pencils and then we'll go with this. All right. So this is the Ada Lovelace 16.2. Should I flip? Should I flip the cameras? Do y'all care? Y'all just want to see me talk about these. This is Ada Lovelace 16.2. It's unsharpened. We're not going to put this in here because I have a sharpened one probably somewhere in this bin somewhere. Field notes, unsharpened pencil. 
Pass. I think I can fit how many pencils I can I cannot put in here. Probably like 40, huh? With my left hand, I can only write cursive backwards. That sounds uh, very interesting. Um, the bugle. That was uh, my pen case manufacturer. I'm not going to take that call on stream. So there's the bugle. It's the half and half one. Also not sharpened. I have a sharpened one somewhere. So that one gets passed. I'm just going to rip through these. Oh, look. Here's the pencil addict that Caroline made me. That's from the CW Pencil Stamping Machine. It's got my name on it. This is like when you're a kid and go into like elementary school, you get your name stamped on the pencils. And it says the pencil addict. I have one of these sharpened here somewhere. So that one doesn't make the cut. A lot of un So this is apparently the unsharpened bucket. So the Mitsubishi 9852. This is the um, eco-friendly version of, I guess it's the 9852 that I like so much. So the sharpener is the Uni KH20. I even unloaded the I unloaded the uh, shavings today in case I wanted to sharpen some of these up. So this was like full. So it's the KH20. It's the best. The 9852 EW. This will make the cut, but I've got some sharpened ones in here somewhere. I might have to kick this whole cup to the curb if none of these are sharpened. I'm going to go through this in bulk here in a second. But this one, if, if you're new into pencils, this is one that you can get into very inexpensively. That is very, very high quality. So it's the Mitsubishi 9852 EW. And even the, um, the non-eco-friendly one, the standard one, is, is pretty good. <laughs> We can make some Jedi pens. Um, all right, so here's a different pen addict one that is sharpened. So this one has the black stamping. Makes the cut. That one's in the bucket. All right, bugles, bugles. We can get the bugles out of here. What is this? Is this a Viarco? Toby's in here yelling. Desen Ho? What is this one? Viarco Desenho? I don't know what this one is. Clearly, I've never really used it because it just has like the stock uh, sharpen on it. So I don't know. Retro Prin Princess, welcome. Glad you made it. We're talking about pencils now, um, which could be super interesting or super boring um, or all uh, together the same. So I don't know if this one makes the cut or not because I've never used it. Does this one makes the cut? make the cut, this Viarco? I don't know. We'll set it to the side. It's more... More Mitsubishis, more Bugles. So I just apparently stashed some extra pencils in here. So the Tombow 2558, this one will make the cut. Do you own any lefty sharpeners? I do not. Can you change the rotation on some of these? Probably not because the blades are in a certain direction. Um, this one will make the cut. This is just an extra backup one. I have some in use on this one. This is another one that you can buy very inexpensively and get a really high quality pencil experience tombow 2558 kenyan college pencil i think someone sent me that i don't even know where kenyan college is there's all kinds of stuff in here oh um the md midori md pencils this one's not sharpened because the ones i did sharpen i didn't like so here's a video done on the uni kh20 sharpener oh that's awesome Statler, Mars Lumograph 2H. I think that one will make the cut for now. Because I like the H, the H side of the ledger. Um, this is craft design technology. What they do is they, um, they make other stationary companies' products mint green. That's um, kind of their business model. And charge double for it, right? So they... Worked with Camel for Camel's pencil, which is, you know, the integrated eraser pencil and made it mint green and then charged double. It's fancy. That one makes the cut because I love that pencil. All right. Magic Koenor Magic Pencil. This is a big one. Um, this one is yellow, blue, and red with a green, yellow, red, and it's jumbo. That one makes the cut. That one's going in the special holder. So this is what we have so far. We're just going to rip through these pretty quickly. 
All right, it's a Faber-Castell 9000, Statler Norks, uh, HB. We'll pass on those for now. Those could, this could, I'm gonna make a maybe. I'm gonna make a maybe stack. We'll see how it goes, but I bet they probably won't make the cut. I think I got enough here. The, these, these, the craft design stuff comes out great. You pay an extreme premium for the privilege of mint green, and sometimes it's worth it. Like, I'm down. Um, General's Goddess, number two. I don't think I've ever used that one. Print Prologue. I don't know what that is. Is that Andy's book? There's the Pencil Perfect promo pencil from the book release of the Pencil Perfect by Caroline Weaver. Boom. So that was, uh, Caroline sent me that when, sent me the book. What is Print Prologue? I have two of these. Is that Andy's book? I don't know what Print Prologue is. Uh, the Chunghua something. China First Pencil Co. I don't know what this one is. A lot of these have come in the um, the pencil subscription. So that's why they're just in this bin. They're either extras, duplicates, or things I got that I don't know what to do with. That's how they end up in this uh, in these bins. With leftovers, you can have a pencil throwing competition outside. Truth. More. So I bought a dozen of these. So that's why they're all laying around in these in these bins until they get used. Ooh, here's a good one. This is a definitely make it. So this is the CWPE Karen Dash, uh, the black version that they don't sell anymore. This one 100% makes the cut. That one's in. In. Uh, Statler HB Jumbo Pencil. Eh, pass. You love that CWP e pencil? Are they going to make any more? Have they said anything? Okay, so here's the Tombow 2558. Uh, that is actually sharpened, so we keep that one. Print Prologue was a notebook you reviewed three years ago. Sweet. <laughs> All right, voicemail from the pen case company. I gotta do that when I'm done. Oh man, this is this is an OG. I don't know if anyone remembers Hickory's Hard Goods. They might still be around. They had some cool stuff from Japan that they would import from time to time. So this is a carpenter pencil. Must just been like a throw in with an order or something. I don't know if Hickory's Hard Goods is still around. Uh, Nataraj Marble pencil. Pretty good. I think people like those. I haven't really used them. Here's the Rhodia pencil. It's triangular. Um, it's just kind of average. There needs to be at least one mechanical pencil in there. I keep those separately. Do I have any in here? I keep them separately, generally. Like, I'll put all the wooden pencils together, then all the mechanical pencils together. So this is my this is the one I've been using a lot, which is the Platinum Pro Use 171. <laughs> Voicemail, you owe us money. I actually owe them $0, Tony, if you can believe that. We're trying to figure out what's next past the wax canvas um, cases that are coming sooner than later. Yes, this is the Rhodia pen cup. So we're going to fill it with pencils. Um, let's see here. Ooh, here's a fancy one. I should use this one. So this is a left-handed printed Lenore from Wright notepads. I guess they did these with Musgrave. And I've never sharpened it. This was a, um, this was one <clears throat> that um, was a pack in with the uh, right notepads. So this one, this one goes in the cup because I need to sharpen it. So let's sharpen it real quick. Left-handed sharpening is not as fun as right-handed sharpening. I gotta go to the opposite. Extra long brass town cases. If anything, we'll do double wide brass town cases. Hey, Cocolina. Good morning. Oh, sharpening is the worst on stream. Because I shake the whole desk. Yeah, I won't do this anymore after this. Oh, I see what you're saying, Jackie. Gosh dang it. You're making too much sense. Yes, I will put the Rhodia pencil in the Rhodia holder. So yeah, that's a fancy pencil. And it's, it's left-handed. Do y'all know what I mean when I say left-handed? It means it's printed for a left-handed to hold. This needs to be my pencil. It's printed so um, left-handers can read the, the print. Right? Because normally, 
pencils are printed for right-handers to read the print. Did you know that, chat? So this one's printed, I call it left-handed. So it's printed backwards of what you would see. So if you hold it right-handed, you can see it's upside down. So that one 100% goes in here. Fine, Jackie, I'm putting the Rhodia in there. Fine, fine. Musgrave pencil, thanks. This is a thanks pencil. Um, I think this came with their, their hat. Good morning, Thunder Viking. When I ordered the Musgrave hat, I, this is just a regular old pencil. Um, I don't know what this Kimberly's is with the with the metal cap thing. This doesn't inspire me. These pencils have to inspire me. Pretty much all the Karen Dash pencils inspire me. So this one's going in there. This is one of their basic ones. Karen Dash Technograph 777 HB. Jevitarelli, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. That's kind of a neat pencil. There's like little fish swimming on it. I don't know if you can see that on there in the stamping. That one's kept. So it looks like we all like, y'all like the sound of that? I need to find a way, if you like that, I need to find a way not to like rock the whole desk. Return to Nature, Della Star. I don't know what that is. Nataraj, Extra Dark, Platinum. This one we keep. So the Nataraj, Extra Dark is a is a popular pencil that I should use more. More Mitsubishis. Paper Mate Mongol. Look at that. That's some OG OG pencil time right there. Agret Sutko's in here somewhere. I put the box back in my room. I got to get them out. Another Statler. Print Prologue. Apparently, they, they sent me a lot of pencils when I did that. Another Hickory's. Oh, another, another Blaze It pencil. I don't know. These just seem like Blaze It pencils to me. All right, what's... Oh, here's one of the worst pencils ever designed. It's the Statler Norris Stylus pencil. So instead of a racer on the end, it's got a stylus. That's just dumb. That's just dumb. I have no idea what this is. Conte à Paris. Pierre Noir 2B, France, 1710. This must have come from like one of the pencil subscription boxes. No clue. Oh, this one definitely does not go in the box. Wopex. Johnny gave me some Wopexes. This is not going in the box. Never. It's poison. It will poison the other pencils. General writing. Dell, I don't know what that is. Oh, here's the the big Karen Dash uh, Blackwood. So this is the jumbo size one. Uh, that'll make the cut for now. It could be moved if if not. Kimberly is another one of these Viarco Dinsho things. I don't know what these are. And Mitsubishi High Uni 3B. That makes the cut. That goes in there. All right, we're almost done with this, with this box. Which one would you put in the box, Tony? Oh, all-time favorite right here. This is my backup. This is the CWPE editor. The Wopex, you'd put it in there ironically. I get you. I just don't want it to contaminate the other pencils. I have one that I've tried to sharpen with different sharpeners. That one would go in there because it's so trashed. So I'm gonna put this in here as the backup because I keep my other one somewhere else. Like I keep it with one of my notebooks because I like this pencil so much. It's like traditional graphite on this side and then the red colored pencil on this side. So that one stays. And actually let's put it red side up. Wow, that is a thick core for a 4B. That's like thicker than the, uh, uh, the Tombow KKS. This is the uni, high uni, Mitsubishi. That's like a 10, that's like a 10 size core. Man, no wonder those, those pencils are very popular, kind of expensive. Um, I'm going pencil point down. I wanna be able to see what the barrels are. 
um, Viking um, jumbo pencil. These are cool. I'll probably put one of the voting pencils in here when I get to it. Um, pencil holder. Oh, here's a old. This is a vintage 3H. It's this barrel turquoise. Doesn't say electronic lead. Oh, where's that guy? This has electronic lead. Kimmy sealed eagle turquoise. And on the back, you can't read it. There's some stamping here. It says electronic lead. That goes in because it's cool. All right, those are repeats. Never used a Wopec. Why don't we like them? Because they are a plastic. Um, they are a plastic barrel, right? They're not a wood barrel. They're um, they're fake, so you can't sharpen it like very well. So this is like this is plastic, or some other concoction, extruded plastic. So it's super gross. Oh, uh, what is this? Fabric Castell. Oh, this is like a colored pencil, gold colored pencil. That one stays. All right, I can start filling this box back in now. Oh, another Wopex. I think this must be the one I tried to sharpen a few times. Yeah, I'm not even putting it in there, ironically. Um, Fabric Castell. This is the grippy one, the Grip 2001. I like the grippy one. I just don't love the pencil. I just don't love the pencil. So those go. Oh, here's a fancy one. This is one of those Faber Castells that's made to go in other things, I think. Right in one of their like perfect pencil holders or whatever. That's kind of cool. That goes in the box. This is my room. Thanks for the follow. You ever use the pencil that's all graphite and no wood? No. I know what you're talking about, but I haven't used one. It's a Koinor colored pencil of some kind. I'm not putting any colored pencils in here. Um, here is a um, Mitsubishi. This is the 2637. This is their dual wielding pencil, blue and red. All right, that's enough for that bin. So what do we got in here so far? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 pencils already in here I kept out of there. We might have to readjust. Might be a wrist readjustment period. your wrist brad that's the thing that hurts my wrist the most is if i drop something and you like jerk to go catch it it's a, always a bad idea because you can't stop yourself it's just out of habit all right one down we'll go with uh cafe du monde next i don't think there's a lot in here that we need um but yeah these are my favorite containers those all graphite pencils are like 3h the line is so faint i haven't tried those those Fabric Castells Domodal School pencil cases in Austria, I bet. What about um, what about the is it the Norris or the Norica? What about this one? The the Norris. That seems like a very popular school pencil. What determines your usage between pens and pencils? Right now, it's my wrist is determining everything. Um, I don't know that I would have had a thought to build this pencil cup, just in Denmark. Gotcha. Um, I don't think I would have had a thought to build this pencil cup if I was in normal writing mode because I'd have a, I have a, I would have a lot more fountain pens inked up and a lot more pens in the rotation. But right now, pencils are my favorite writing instrument because of how I'm having to write. Um, so that's the only thought process right now. It's what's working best for me in my current writing situation. Um, so I go back in two weeks to get the wrist x-rayed again. Hopefully I get a smaller brace and if that allows me to have more of a grip. So what happens is this part right here in the grip is really hard. Like you can't work around like your regular grip in, in holding the fountain pens and then it makes my hand really tired to write with. So 
<clears throat> so so far, I am. Uh, that's what's determining it, determining in it. Um, otherwise, it would just be feel like what I wanted to use, what I'm enjoying at the moment. You know, whether it's a pencil pen or fountain pen. All right, let's grab some of these. Oh, this was a sample Blackwing sent me when they were doing their uh, stamping. Clayton and Little. I don't know what this is. They just sent me a random pack of, hey, here's how we can stamp pens and charge bukus for them. So that does not make the cut. Oh, here's some more Wright pencils. So Wright used to do Musgrave pencils back in the day with all their sets. So this is the Chesapeake model. They're orange. Have you ever used the Pinaferina Ethergraph? I haven't, but I've used similar, they call them leadless pencils. I think is what is that what they call them? Um, they call them leadless pencils. Um, they're weird, but they work. The Pinaferina design is amazing. Um, I wouldn't like to use that every day because you can't, so the thing with those pencils is they always have a rounded tip, right? You can't get any type of variation like you could in a normal pencil, right? Because that, it's never going to wear down, right? So it's basically just a marking stick, right? You can use it to mark things, whether that's writing, if you want to write or not. Um, the design is killer, but the usefulness, I think, is limited, right and it is light you feel like well i'm gonna make a darker mark by just shoving it on here because that's what i would do with the pencil and that doesn't change anything so the biggest flaw in those is the variation that you get like yes it'll write anywhere on, on pretty much anything but will you enjoy it the writing experience that's the challenge Yeah, my wrist brace. How dare you, wrist brace. Um, so here's the uh, the Karen Dash. This is the Pine. I have another one that's um, more used than this one. We'll save that for the for the cup holder. What is this? This is a. Oh, this was some. This is just some pencil I got in the the CWP pack that I've never opened. It's got its built-in holder thing. So there you go. Woodless pencil. Um, here's a Helvetica pencil a friend sent me. I think Les sent me this one. This is very cool. The very the camel style um, pen. Karen Dash Idlevice. I don't think I've used this one yet. I don't know where that one came from. That's not going in the cup. I got I got to cut I got to cut my losses somewhere. Um, I think did Viarco do these? No, this is Statler. I don't know what this is. It's got fruits on it pineapples and grapes and watermelons and oranges maybe Tyler would like this pencil it's got oranges on it he's trying not to laugh oh but made him laugh <laughs> um made in the UK is all I can get off this pencil it's cool looking I have no idea what it is it's just a standard pencil two-tone color and all it says is made in the UK it's got some it's got like a OLA on here, like Ola, but I don't know what it is. Do you typically use the built-in eraser or do you have a separate go-to eraser? Typically, I'll scratch out pencils. I will sometimes use the built-in. I sometimes have a separate, but I am so ingrained in my pen writing that a lot of times unless it's like something small and something I quit catch quickly, I'll just scratch through it. That's why I don't mind pencils without erasers, right? Like this does not phase me at all. I would prefer pencils without erasers. I know, I know. I just do. <laughs> I scratch out pencils. <laughs> I'll erase them like if I'm doing a review or something like that. But uh, I promise you, I just scratch them out. So this is a cool one. This is a big time keeper. So this is a Viking... Um, dual pencil it's 4b on the black side and then hb on the gray side i'm sorry i didn't mean to break all of y'all's heads today i didn't mean to to do that my apologies <laughs> so the thinking is almost all built-in erasers are garbage and i'm more unhappy 
using a garbage eraser and messing up my page than I am scratching through. That's my philosophy on it. <laughs> Where your ideas belong. Apparently, except not using the pencils, erasers. That's why I don't care if pencils have erasers or not. Um, here's another odd camel. I bought this at, when I went to CWPE on the, uh, the Toronto situation. So I would rather use an, a standalone, good quality, like Tombow Mono eraser if I have to do some real uh, legit erasing. Like I keep the one on my other desk. I keep the, um, what's the eraser called with like the 18 different corners on it, right? Y'all seen this picture. It's like a cut out eraser. So you always have like an edge to get in there. I keep that one on my desk. That's the eraser I use when I use an eraser. But like, I mean, when you have the Blackwing erasers that look so good, but are just generally trash, they, they make your paper look worse. So I'm just going to scratch out. This was the 33 and a third. This is one of my least favorite editions that they've done, despite it being all black. Um, I just didn't get it. Like, and I'm a music guy, record guy. Like, I thought this was a not one of my favorites. It does match my brace though, so that's cool. That one's a pass. Uh, here's my one uh, Agretsuko pencil I sharpened the other day. That goes in for sure. General Cedar Point. Do people like this one? I don't know. Probably. Um, ooh, this one stays. This is the 811. This is the library edition. This was voted the most popular volumes edition. Um, the black wing erasers aren't terrible. I do like the, um, I do like to switch them around for colors. So this one, that's a keep one. That's the first non-standard black wing I have in the list. So this is a Cedar Point, it says number 333-1. That's what it says on there, 333-1. That's the only Blackwing pencil I have. Yeah, it surprised me. It's a great addition. Keep it. Okay, keep it. Keep. Um, it surprised me that it won the most popular edition ever. Like, I get it. Cedar Point number one is a good pencil. Okay, that will be the first one I use out of this, this whole mess of pencils that I'm making here. Oh, look, I got another one of these. 19th Amendment needs to go in. I think... It definitely does, but I think that's in a different storage on my desk because I use that one more frequently. I don't think I have one in here. I could. But like some of my most favorite pencils right now are actually on my uh, work desk <laughs> instead of my streaming desk. Um, another two-tone, this is the Tombow Red and Blue. Um, some of those are good, some of those are bad. Here's another one that's uh, gray and highlighter. So... That's very good. The 19th Amendment, 19th Amendment ones are amazing. That's one of the best editions. If they re-voted now, I don't know if that one might win or not. This is a weird uh, Penco. Um, I reviewed this one. It's it's a, a mechanical pencil, but a wooden barrel. It's kind of weird. This one actually shouldn't go in here, so that's going to go separate. That goes in the mechanical pencil stash. Pebble Stationery Company pencil. Another Field Notes. Another Pebble Stationery Co. Uh, I'm gonna hoard this one. This is the Viking 4B HB. This is the pencil I should be using right now. What is this neon one? Just says number two HB on it. It's kind of this wild neon orange. I think this came from a, a CD of a pencil subscription. Thought I had an editor around here, somebody, but I can't find it. Editors, I haven't gone through to like rank I don't have like complete thoughts on like what my top five pencils of all time would be. I think the editor might make that list. That's how much I enjoy that pencil. I've done some cool work with the editor. Right where your ideas belong. I don't know where these came from. Oh, look. I, I was clearly had the intention of hoarding these when I bought them. So there's two more. Here's another editor. That's a fresh one. So this must, that looks like a lot of stuff from my CWP trip, Pebble Stationery. This is a good batch of pencils. I just don't need more than one in there. So this is the Viking uh, Jumbo, but this feels like a medium, medium Jumbo, not like the full, full on Jumbo. Do they have a, it's called the Rolo. 
is there a size designation for this type of pencil? Like it's bigger, it's definitely bigger than a standard, but it's smaller than a traditional jumbo. Uh, this is from a CWP box, right? Sketch. Who makes this? I can't even see who makes this. It's cool looking. Stripes. Yeah, there's definitely bigger than that. General sketch and wash. What the hell does that mean? This must be from a CWP box. I don't know that I would ever bought that on purpose. What the hell is sketch and wash? It sounds sketchy to me. Oh, look, I really like this pencil, apparently. Why don't I use it more? I guess I forgot about it. So here's Nataraj. Very cool paint effect on there. Oh, here's the uh, Dixie Cup pencil. Did CWP have these made? Nice. Was this like an exclusive? Viarco, Airy 2019. I think this is uh, specially made. The Lection Pixel's definitely thicker than the Rolo. Absolutely. What, a water soluble pencil. Interesting. What is this? Karen Dash. Oh, this is like a. Uh, colored pencil like ivory these probably should colored pencil shouldn't even be in this aspara beauty um ooh, there's a 10b there's a 10b uni with a monster core we must be saving that for something special oh did i finish my statement on the midori md I did not like these pencils at all. One of the few pencils like I generally didn't get on with. And here's another kind of uniquely dipped pencil that I don't know that does not have a name on it. Oh, because it's on the front where you had to sharpen. I can't read that at all. Like the only marking on this pencil, I don't know if you can even see it, is where I've like sharpened it off. But it's so tiny I can't read it. Oh, and that's just a number. That's just like a skew. I have no idea what this pencil is. It's always a bad sign. What is this? Oh, this is another little one of those tricky paper tiger. It's like a little golf pencil with a with a holder on here. Aspara Absolute. Did I have one of those? Oh, so here's the Muji. Muji pencils. So... I think this is the review. If you go look on the Pen Attic site, this um, I did a review on this pencil and made some commentary. I think this is the one. Don't hold me to it. I made some commentary about how close it felt to one of the Black Wings. I don't know if it was the 602 or the Pearl or the MMX. And then someone jumped in the comment section to say, they're produced at the same factory that the black rings black wings are produced at so you connect the dots basically do you write with your pencils till they're totally spent i will it's kind of like pencils are kind of like ink bottles with me right you have so many you can't always uh finish one but i do i mean i will so look in the comment section of that one, Tony, and see if that's the one. Like I was comparing them, like I was saying how close they were to Black Wings. Then someone made a comment, like there's some dots to connect there. Um, if that's the review I'm thinking of. So here's some more um, write notepads. This is the Telegraph series. So that's it from there. How do we feel about colored pencils? I love them. But there, there's some not good ones, right? Like there, or okay, there's some that are better than most. Then maybe it's not that one. You see no comments on that post. Then what was the pencil I was comparing it to? Maybe I got an email. Okay, look at the update. It was an email. So the last thing. So the last paragraph in there was from an email I got. They didn't leave a comment. They sent me an email. Now it makes sense. It says, so I'd love to tell you who makes this pencil, but I can't say for sure. Update. According to an enterprising reader, they are made by Kitaboshi, making my Blackwing, Blackwing comment even more interesting than I knew. And then I have a link to Kitaboshi, and that's who Blackwing uses to make their pencils. 
So there you go. I don't know why I linked to that. Oh, that was just a different version of the exact same pencil. So yeah, it was from an email. Do we like Faber-Castell Polychromos? I don't know that I've used those. Oh, so what I was going to say is like the Blackwing colored pencils are not good. Um, I use the um, Tombow Erosion set of colored pencils, and I just adore them completely. Um, here's a here's some coloring I did on stream the other day, or last year sometime. So that's the Tombow Erogiton. Um There's lots of good colored pencils. Love them. All right. That's that set. Let's knock out this one more, and then I gotta go figure some stuff out. Anna got me addicted to Derwent. Nice. But I've never tried the Polychromos before. All right, so this is where we didn't add that many from that set there. So. All right, this one I think we'll get a lot from. This is my most used um, set. Polychromos are hands down my favorite color pencils. Well, now I need to try them. Prismacolors are super popular. I had a I had a reader send me the entire like briefcase, wooden briefcase set of poly, uh, polychromos of um, the Prismacolors that they weren't using anymore. They were an architect and then they were tired and he's like, I've got this set. I don't know if you'll use them. Maybe your kids will use them and my kids use them. Um, I don't see it in here. It's probably in Tyler's room. Tyler uses them a lot. How are the kiddos? Did y'all have a nice Christmas? We did have a great Christmas. Um, really awesome. Really chill. Not much going on. So yeah, really, really good. So the art community is generally Prismacolor versus Polychromos. I, I'm going to write down the Polychromos and get some. Tessa, you can relink your uh, YouTube channel. Please do, actually. <clears throat> I'm going to write down these polychromos because I actually hadn't heard of those. So I'll see if I can get some. Tyler, what I was saying was, do you have that big pencil set in your room? The big, you know, the ones that's in the big wood box? The Prismacolors? Yeah, the Prismacolors. Can you bring that in here? In okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to get a lot of action, I think, from this set. So this is the uh, the California Coast um 840 like a bunch of people love this one i like it too i'm just i have a bunch of other ones i prefer over this one if i'm going to use it but it's a good pencil but it's not going to make the cut yet because there's going to be a lot of black wings that make the cut so um 10 is nelly bly one of the best ones it's one of the most more simple ones it's just like a matte gray barrel made to be like a newspaper and it's got the extra firm core loved them um 42, Jackie Robinson, personal favorite. Both of, both of these go in the cup. So this this bin of pencils has a lot of my favorites in there. So I think we're going to get a lot of action in this in the box from here. So, uh, And you'll see a lot of the black wings that I use. Ravi Shankar. Um, the Eras is the best black wing. Fight me. You've heard me say that. So I will not fight you. Where I have said that on record, I think on the podcast. Um, the only problem with like this Ravi Shankar is this is one of the twisty ferrules. I do like my ferrules to line up with the stamping, and this one does not. But whatever, I use it pretty pretty frequently. So that's a good one. Um, another bugle. Oh, here's my. This is the sharpened bugle. So we'll put that in there. I've been waiting for that one. Erasable Live One Thirty Five. That was from the Baltimore Pen Show last year. That's pretty cool. We're going to put that, we're going to move some of these around, shuffle, shuffle them up because this one's getting a little crowded here. Um, another General's Goddess. What is this one? I can't even make this name out. It's a uh, triangular pencil, but uh, I don't know if this is Korean. It might be Japanese. Oh, it's, oh, it's a Mitsubishi. 
I just saw the Mitsubishi logo, but I don't know what it is. We'll have to sharpen that up. All right, so I had a, help me out with this. I had a pen addict reader send me this. Um, let me lift up the drawers. Send me this because they were no longer using it. So this is the big Prismacolor set. Um, and we use the heck out of this. So when we're doing coloring, We'll get out, like if we're doing like the coloring pages, right? We'll get out this whole set to use. So um, they were a retired architect and they said they're no longer using this. Would I like it? And I said H to the yes. So how cool is that? That's big time. Thank you, buddy. But most of them were like brand new. Yeah, yeah, it was mostly, it was pretty lightly used. We have used the heck out of that, so pretty lucky there right we've had it for like years. yeah we've had it for a few years now that's what tyler was saying <clears throat> tombow mono hb the standard mono hb not the mono 100 um good pencil it's in the uh the the low-end fabric castell perfect pencil holder i guess we'll keep it like that no because that'll just get in the way of this case and I, I won't use this sharpener anyway i do like it for a, a pencil cover so that one made the cut um dixon ticonderoga standard this is a uni nano dia people like the nano dias um i haven't really used these enough to say if whether i like them or not but this is supposed to be the extended wear tip graphite or cores for those so i i should probably test them out more that's one of the okay so here's one of the the 9852s that's sharpened so that goes in here we've been waiting for that one generals layout extra black i haven't tried this that sounds interesting though generals layout extra black another dixon ticonderoga there's one of my mini 602s in various stages of usage. Whoops. Here is my knife sharpened um, mono mark sheet, Tombow mono mark sheet. I chose this one because it's got a pretty stable um, tip. I'm going to leave this one out and work on the sharpening. I actually broke off part of this tip, but this, is, this one's been really good. That one we will put um, tip up. All right, we're getting pretty full in here. We still got some room for some more. Um, test scoring pencils. Do y'all like the test scoring pencils? Is this Generals? Musgrave, excuse me, Musgrave test scoring pencil. They're kind of popular, right? Like people use these? I don't know. Oh, and here's the Generals test scoring. That's interesting. Should I do a compare and contrast of the two test scoring pencils? Um, here's another rainbow pencil, super stick rainbow from Jolly. These are pretty nice. You have the t-shirt of the test scoring pencil. That makes a lot of sense for those of us who know Tony. Viarco Magneto. Is this supposed to have a magnet? Does this stick to stuff? I don't think, I don't have anything magnetic around here. Oh, there it goes. It's stuck to my microphone. You got to do it on the side. Yeah, it sticks. Here, I'll show you. Oh, it's going to fall over. Anyway, no, the magnet sticks, so there you go. I don't need that. Erasable Live 135. I actually use this one. We're going to keep that one. Good times, good times. Pencils You Should Know. This is from Caroline's second book. <laughs> from the PR package. Does this one say this one doesn't say by Caroline Weaver on it though. So that's the pencils you should whoops, pencils you should know pencil. Very cool. Another Ravi Shankar pencil. Someone sent me a couple of these. So we'll keep this one behind. I already have one in here. Viking Element 1 HB. Those are pretty solid pencils, just good workhorse uh workhorse pencils. All right. Karen Dash Stinkwood. This definitely goes. This might be in the top five as well. Let's see. So we have Blackwing Eras, the editor from CW Pencils, the Stinkwood, 
So there's three if I were making a top five. I don't know what to do next. More 9852s. This is a weird pine Eidelweiss. You might like the CWPE CDA better than the Stinkwood. I like the style of the Stinkwood better. Like, I give, I give, uh, I don't hate black dyed wood, but it is not my favorite. Like, I obviously love that pencil, but the black dyed wood is not my favorite. Where's your Tennessee red? Dude, it was the first, one of the first two in the box. So I said these are the two pencils that I've been using the most, the MMX and the Tennessee Red. Those were one and two in the box. Keep up. Um, this is something out of a box. Be goody Japan. It's not even sharpened yet. Seems cool though. All right, this is a this is a another favorite. It wouldn't make my top five. But this uh, Karen Dash is the Natura. This is one of the most fun pencils to write with. It is much lighter than any other Karen Dash, but the tip is, uh, and the, the point retention is really, really strong for an HB. Um, um, excuse me, it's a 2H. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I like it so much. I do like the H side of the scale. All right, so here's another Mitsubishi Mark Sheet. What is this? Oh, this is graphite, clay, water, wood, glue. This is uh, this is from the um, Pencils You Should Know book. So that was from the, the promo pack from the... Um, those came from the publisher this time, where before Caroline would send them to me. So this is the Viarco Violet. I think we'll keep this one in there. I like having the, the purple pencil. That's not a... Um, um, colored pencil right it's not as waxy feeling so this is the mitsubishi this is the 9850 so this is the 9852 the same same core as the 9852 but in the more traditional like office standard barrel as opposed to the um it's to this is the eco-friendly barrel so these are theoretically the same pencils right so um you can tell i like this one a lot so that goes in the bin we got another one of these. I'm going to hoard these because they don't make them anymore. They're going to have to make them anymore. Correlation between liking Japanese fine nibs and H pencils. I think that it's absolutely a correlation. It's it's my writing style, right? So you have these writing style preferences that like when I pick up a writing instrument and I know my handwriting is such, these are the things that work best for that. So it, for me, it is. I like Japanese fine nibs and don't like H pencils. You can get some that are have a good color. Oh, here's the Wopex I ruined. That's a pretty good tip on it, though. I even put a little special holder on it. What is this? Film tracing reproduction. This is a Dixon. I can't even read that. It's like an inverse. Dixon Matte R1. What is this for? Is this like a like literal tracing, like tracing paper? <laughs> Your high thought hypothesis has been crushed. I don't think so. It fits for me. Tony's an outlier. Don't count anything he says. Velvet Drawing, American Pencil Co. Is that a company that still exists? American Pencil Co. I don't know where this came from. Animation probably. I should probably try this pencil, right? I don't think I've ever tried this pencil. I'll put it in. I'm putting the re repro pin in the in the holder so I can try it. Like it can't be all my favorites in there. It needs to be some things I need to test out and try. All right, we're almost done. Here. Almost done here. What do we got? Franklin Christoph pencils. These these were not good. Sorry, Mike. Um, they were um. There were not a lot of variation in them in uh lead grades core grades like they're perfectly fine they just i didn't feel that there was much uh variation in them 4b uni 4b high uni 
I haven't tried that yet. Here's another test scoring pencil that I've apparently tried at some point. Must not have really stuck with me. But did I buy more than a dozen of these? Because they keep popping up everywhere. Okay, Tony. So here's a different one. Here's General Cedar Point 2HB. Is that different than the other one? Is that different from the other one, Tony? So Blackwing Natural. Just standard unsharpened natural. Uh, what is this one? Oh, this is a Mitsubishi 9800 without the eraser. I don't know where I got that from. Maybe CWP. But this is the same as the 9852 minus the eraser. It's just a, a open-ended pen, pencil. Another Brad Dowdy the Pen Attic pencil. We already saved one of those, so that's that doesn't make the cut. Tombow 8900, good standard pencil. Cedar point number two is different. So here's another, um, the Koenor Jumbo magic pencil. So this is the red, white, and blue magic pencil. I already saved one in here, so we're, we're going to skip that one. We might be down to it. We might be down to, to having it filled up. So Koenor Duo Carpenter pencil with graphite on one side, red on the other. The, is this Mitsubishi? Yeah, this is Mitsubishi. 2667 this is the eco-friendly barrel for their um blue red pencil which is fine um blackwing number four this is the mars rover one i don't know if that was the official name of it um not one of my favorites um i didn't really like i didn't really jive with the barrel color and design like it's fine it's okay it's it probably wouldn't crack my top 10 Autovice, what is this? Pelican text marker. Why is this in here? There's a highlighter. Of all the things in there, there's a highlighter in there. Oh, here's one of the small um, magic pencils. This is the Koenor, um, like the more standard size, the non-jumbo red, yellow, blue one. Since I already have the red, yellow, blue core in here, we'll stick with the jumbo version of it. So same core, but jumbo sized. You really need to teach me how to say Idlevice. Yes, you do. Um, it's a it's a well known uh, pronunciation issues with me. Uh, Dixon Ticonderoga, another Viking Scoilablianton. Teach me how to say that. School pencil. That's what it means. Scoilablianton. Musgrave Harvest. Is that any good? I don't know if that's good or not. Another Norse. All right, I'm almost done here. Ninety-eight fifty-two again. Hey, does anyone need any one of those? Um, Koenor Rapidograph fifteen hundred. Um, excuse me, Koenor Hardmuth fifteen hundred B. Watch Sound of Music. Okay, this pencil belongs to Brad. You can't have it, and it's pink. And belongs to me, and you can't have it. Edelweiss, Edelweiss, is that better? Edelweiss, General's drafting pencil. Tombow twenty five fifty eight, another one of those, another Helvetica. Um, this is a good pencil, the Ticonderoga Laddie. I've talked about that recently. That goes in here, like that, that's a keep. Um, the. Fabric Castell 9000 Jumbo. It's a Jumbo. All right, this is an interesting one, but this is a keeper, but I'm a little bit worried about it. This is the Mitsubishi. I don't know the name of it, but it's their 10B. It's like an $8 pencil or something stupid like that. But look at that core. This one gets turned upside down. This one goes point up because it's a little more for Gile, like the... Uh, like the um, mark sheet that I've handwritten. Plus, I want to see, I don't know, we'll see. I might have to turn it upside down. I'm keeping all these point up ones together. But that's, yeah, that's like a crazy, crazy expensive pencil. It's sold like in a single package. 
like it comes with one pencil it's got its own packaging and everything i guess that's what so they can charge you more edelweiss edelweiss so this is the midori pencil that i don't like it does not deserve that it does not deserve protection musgrave hermitage never used that before clearly it's not sharpened here's another jolly jumbo multicolor magic type pencil there's a small fiber castell here is the karen dash blackwood i must have my viking voting pencil in the other room because i'm done with this box with all these pencils so there's some fate i'm gonna leave some room for the ones edelweiss edelweiss i'm gonna leave these oh here's another really wild one so this is the gekoso this is another very expensive uh this one is 8b and this is another like eight or ten dollar pencil um jumbo sized um i'll keep that one it's a pretty cool pencil um there's a muji that's the muji from the review so we'll keep that in there muji slash blackwing um mitsubishi 2b and a viarco deshino which i still don't know what that is all right that's all for these so we did pretty good here and i still have some room left for some of my other favorite pencils that i'm gonna go grab from the other room like um you know my ada lovelace oh there's elizabeth there's toby what's up baby what's up baby um all right hey toby so we'll um maybe on this can i do the tip protector on Let's see this tip protector fits the big 10b yeah that might be the play right there the 10b 10b job so some of my other favorites like the uh what have i been using the 19th amendment I've used the 56. Those are all on my desk. Sorry, I, you would think I would learn to mute that after the first time. But I think we got a pretty good start here. So this is going to stay in here um, for pencils I use. Mm. Most frequently. Let's see if I get these back in there. So why are you keeping some of the ones I really don't like? Maybe I'll like them in the future. Maybe I want to test them out and compare them against something. Um, you know, the kids use them. They come and grab whatever they want. So it's like, why do you have more than one pen? You just do. So. But there could be a purge. In the future like there will be a pen purge early next year sometime you know it's good to go through and kind of see what you have in the inventory that helped today we'll do this with pens with fountain pens one day next year um we're gonna have a uh, purge round two what did i sell like 18 fountain pens last time i don't know if i'll have that many this time um but yeah, it, it's worth worth doing, um, you know, if you're not using them, rehome them. And, you know, fountain pens you can sell, pencils you can give away, give to school um, to use, give them to teachers, you know, let your kids destroy them, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I'll get rid of some of them. So it's just a process. All right, pencil purge, grab bag giveaway. See, even better, you know, you... That's my kind of thinking right there. Love that. Speaking of giveaways, I'm giving away. I'm giving away the set of note cards, three sets of note cards I got from the Analog Project on Kickstarter, which is what I said I'd do when I ordered them. Um, because I like the cards. The cards are good. I just don't like the pre-formatted um, way. I'm like, like I'm not going to use them for the the check boxes. Um, on there i'll give you 10 percent to sell my pins on consignment maybe i won't say no but maybe um what was i saying oh giveaway today on the blog 
three packs of cards that have like today, this week, someday, I think. Um, they're good cards. Like if you like that, if you want to try that format and try like a task list card format, um, you know, you should uh, check out that giveaway. Enter. Will you stream on Thursday? Absolutely. Uh, I think I'm streaming. I should be streaming every day, um, every normal Tuesday and Thursday for for now. Like I think we're just on normal schedule going forward. Expect it, expect me to be there. Updated has been a year since I still haven't gotten my Hippo Noto. I was thinking about that this morning when I was getting these pencils because I saw my Hippo Noto there. That stinks. That stinks. So, um, all right, what else do we need to talk about? Because I'm going to have to wrap it up here momentarily. So, we'll be podcast tomorrow. Um, I got to work on that this afternoon. If y'all have any podcast topic ideas, hit me up happy to hear them um i'll have release a new friends of the show for pen Attic members on thursday i think i have about six or eight in the can so we're good through like january february but i need to start recording some more so if you're a pen Attic member and want to chat with me and have it recorded and shared with the world uh get in touch um friday oh thursday stream Friday writing for Pen Attic members, we're doing the year in review, which is always a fun one to do, except this one I'm a little bit nervous about because there was a lot less traveling this year. So uh, we'll still go month by month and review the uh, review the pen years, the pen year in review through uh, the through the eyes of the Pen Addict. Has the pandemic increased your audience? I don't know. Like the stream numbers have generally been trending upwards. The Panatic memberships have trending upwards. Although we're at the time of the year where there's like the most churn in Panatic memberships. So they drop down like as people's expire from a year ago. And then they usually pick back up in late January kind of thing. <laughs> Podcast topic. Why some companies keep selling a product that they don't have in stock and haven't fulfilled past orders. It's a nightmare. Like I couldn't, I couldn't function. Like I just couldn't. I don't know. We're all different, I guess. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's the next week. Like we're back to normal, normally scheduled programming around here. So all the panatic articles, all the uh, yeah. So the difference, Tony, is we made a mistake. We owned up to it. We tried to kill you with kindness. And we'll still ship you the product as soon as it's ready. So, yeah, communication, details, big difference. Admitting. So, yeah, doesn't mean it didn't suck for you and other people involved. But you, know, you make a mistake, you do your best you can to fix it as quickly as and as judiciously as possible so i will not take i will not be lumped into that same boat so audience will also back to the audience question i never ask what our podcast numbers are i should probably check into that i'm curious if they've changed over the pandemic pandemic time um but yeah you know, it's it didn't go down. I will say that, Coco. If anything, slightly up, but that's kind of anecdotal without like black and white numbers in front of me. It feels normal to slight improvement in general. So that's what I'm gonna go with for now. So um and then I'm going to go for now. So uh, that's it. We'll be back here Thursday. Live podcast tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uh, giveaway up on the blog. I may not have a review tomorrow on the blog. We still might be light on reviews this week just because of holidays and stuff like that. But then uh, next week, reviews will be back to normal. So um, that's it. We got you at the start of the shutdown. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious what the podcast numbers are. I'll have to ask. 
Sarah, you have one almost ready for me. Thank you. That would be awesome for Thursday. It would be perfect. All right. Thanks again. I will talk to you all later. Uh, I don't vice.